Hey everyone, just a quick update on the Jeep Common Rail Diesel. I think I'm finally done with disassembly. I'll see in a second what I got going on here. Uh, but first, a big thanks to the people on the forums and on, especially on the Facebook page for the, the Liberty CRD. They've been extremely helpful in guiding me through this process and there's truly, truly hardcore enthusiasts. They sold about 10,000 of these um, in 2005 and about 8,000 in 2006. So they're fairly rare uh, and they've trickled into the hands of uh, some pretty hardcore enthusiasts and it's nice to see that kind of response. I mean, I buy a question, I post a question on the forum and within, within minutes I get an answer and uh, it's been extremely helpful. Um, but, but here we are. We've, uh, I think I'm done finally with disassembly and we've got the head off, going to the machine shop and um, we'll, we'll see a bunch of bits here. So um, let me get into some of the details. Uh, I want to show you the condition of the pistons and some previous damage that occurred here. So uh, give me one second. So here we are. We're down to the bare block basically. Um, I've got the power steering pump is still in place. The AC compressor is still in place and the fuel pump slash distribution pump is still in place. Everything else is gone. The exhaust manifold is gone. The head's obviously off. Uh, the turbo is gone. Uh, the intake, everything is off on the intake side. So we're basically got the bare block here. Uh, as you can see, I did replace the motor mounts. Took that opportunity while I was down here to replace the motor mounts. Also way back here is where the um, crank position sensor is located and for 50 bucks I just decided to change that rather than have it go bad in the future and then have to dig down in there and get it. As you can see it's behind the turbo above the exhaust and it would be a real bitch to get to when this is all together. So I took the opportunity to take care of that now. Um, but just real close, so <clears throat> cylinder one here, there was some previous damage uh, to this cylinder. Uh, you can see the little pot marks on top of uh, cylinder number one. Um, and what that's from, uh, the original engine had ceramic glow plugs in it. These are the replacements. These are the five volt metal plugs, um, glow plugs. The previous ones were ceramic and they were prone to breaking off in the cylinder. And it looks like that's what happened here. If you look at this one mark right here, it lines up perfectly with the tip of a glow plug. So I think, and, and this was a recall way back when, when these were fairly new, uh, Jeep recalled them and they put the, the metal five volt uh, glow plugs in. So I think that's what happened here on, on cylinder number one. And also on cylinder number four, it's got the same kind of uh, markings on the top of the piston. Um, I'll rotate this around and show you, uh, so you get two and three in a second, but the, the cylinder walls actually look to be in good shape. So at some point when this recall was done and the original damage from these glow plugs was done, somebody determined that this was okay and that the pistons are still in good shape. Uh, and if you look at this mark right here, it's very close to the edge. And I'll move that down. I'll move the piston down here in a second. You can see that the cylinder wall is, um, I'm going to move it right now, it's in relatively good shape. There's no, just a bunch of oil drops in here, but there's no uh, scoring or anything where that mark is. So I don't think that it did any damage. Either that or they replaced these liners without replacing the piston, which I find hard to believe. Um, but as we do this, let me rotate two and three to the opposition here. So two is in pretty good shape, except for that very... This is the valve recess for the intake one. You see this little missing right there, that little missing chunk. Uh, don't know what caused that. There doesn't appear to be any impact marks on top of the piston, but uh, there's just some debris laying in here from the wind. Um, and then cylinder three is in perfect shape. There's really no issues with three. A little bit of marks right here, but I don't think that's anything. It can kind of wipe off. So um, I think the block is in good shape. So. One thing, let me go back to piston number one. Actually, let me, while I'm on two here. So if I rock this piston back and forth, you can see there's a little bit of play at the top of its stroke, but they all seem to be the same amount of play. I think that's normal. The other thing, one of the guys on the forum suggested I do, and I did this, uh, I had all the pistons in uh, the mid stroke, and I put 
uh, 100 cc's of motor oil, so the Rotella T6 5W40 motor oil in the cylinders. Put the exact same amount, measured the amount, and let it sit. Timed it for two hours and came back and it was essentially at the same height. And in fact, I let it sit overnight and there was very little loss of leak down of oil past the ring. So I think the rings are good. And honestly, I have to draw the line somewhere, both from a budget perspective and from a time perspective. And me, I decided that this is going to be the, the, the line in the sand, the, the head gasket, right? So below this, we're going to leave everything in here as is. We're going to leave the pistons, we're going to leave the liners, we're going to leave the bearings, we're going to leave the oil pump, we're going to leave everything else there. Everything I'm going to do is, is the upper end. And in the future, if something goes wrong, I'll have a brand new upper head, upper end, and I'll, I'll then address the, the block situation. But I had to draw the line somewhere else. This, you know, the whole, it would have been a complete rebuild and it would have drove the cost up and, and I would have missed my time window. So uh, that's what I've decided. Uh, let me show you the other bits that came off of here and show you some of the unique features about this engine because uh, these guys on the forum are really hardcore and uh, it takes a hardcore bunch of guys to really uh, embrace the unique challenges that this vehicle uh, presents and this engine presents. Um, one question for the guys on the forum if you're watching. Um, so the let me just show you here. Where'd my wrench? Here it is. Uh, so I'm going to put this back. I'm going to go back to uh, top dead center on cylinder one. Oops. So there's top dead center. Now the factory service manual says that the service position where you reassemble your timing gears and your timing belt and everything is 90 degrees after top dead center. And I'm assuming that means top dead center for cylinder one. So if I go, so we're at top dead center now. If I put the wrench straight up and down and I move it to 90 degrees. I'm going to actually move this wrench 90 degrees without pulling it off the hex. And there she is at 90 degrees. Now in this position, the dowel pin that goes into the flywheel through the, through the case, the engine case, which is right back here, this little hole here is where the dowel pin goes. And it lines up with a a hole in the flywheel and that does not line up at, at 90 degrees off of top dead center where it does line up is where I have this mark which is where you see it marked there that's that and that's probably about 45 degrees from top dead center is where that pin lines up so I'm not exactly sure what's going on there is the factory service manual wrong at 90 degrees or is perhaps my flywheel on in the wrong spot and if that's the case what do I do so that's one issue we got to work through um, all right, let me show you some of the other bits that I've got off this. All right, here's some of the water pump or cooling cooling system bits. This is the back side of the water pump. It's actually in two halves. This gets bolted to the uh, block. Oh, there's Daytona. Daytona. Hi, girl. <laughs> this is uh, this gets bolted to the block. Let me show you. So this, you can see the four studs here. This gets bolted right to there, those four studs, and kind of sits here off to the side. Um, so to get to this water pump is a real pain in the neck if you're going to replace the whole assembly. Uh, fortunately, you can just buy the front part of the water pump with the impeller. This is the factory part with the plastic impeller. The aftermarket upgrade has a brass impeller. It is driven by the timing belt, so you got to do your full timing belt service when you're here in the water pump. But those go together like that. There is an O-ring seal that seals the two of them together. The thermostat housing, this is a new part that the previous owner replaced in an attempt to solve the overheating problem. This gets bolted to the head right about here. Uh, this is a non-serviceable part. This is sealed. The thermostat is inside here. If you can see it down in there, the thermostat's in there and it's not serviceable. You can't take this unit apart so you got to replace this entire thing for I think it's $150 which is kind of a shame, but that's the way they designed it. And then this guy, this is, uh, uh, is a point of some confusion. This is a viscous heater. It works like an air conditioning clutch. It sits up here, it's driven by the accessory. And uh, because diesel engines are so thermally efficient, they don't produce much heat, especially in the winter time. So this the sole purpose of this thing is to create heat for the cabin. Uh, it's got a clutch on it, electrically engages when the temperature is below a certain point, and it actually just creates friction and creates heat for the cooling system. Um, 
a lot of guys eliminate this. Uh, I guess they're not concerned about having heat. Uh, even though I'm in Arizona, I will not be doing that. I like my heat. Um, this is the last part of the cooling system. This is actually what drives the mechanical fan. This is bolted to the front of the engine and drives the, me the mechanical fan attached to these threads. And it just it uses a viscous coupling uh, to, to, to engage and disengage the cooling fan. Uh, most of the time, most conventional engines, the cooling fan attaches to the front end of the water pump. In this case, it's, it's, it's quite a bit unique, different from that. All right, let's move on. Okay, here is the cylinder head off and the valve cover, which also houses the intake manifold as well as the cams. So let's look at the head is off. So remember the root cause here of this failure was a 50 cent bolt. These bolts are all short bolts and the previous mechanic had put a long bolt in the harmonic balancer which protruded through the backside, hit the belt, chewed up the belt, and caused the belt to jump timing, which then broke rocker arm in cylinder four's intake. Both intakes, rockers were broken, and one of the intakes was broken, I think it was the exhaust intake, was broken on cylinder number three. Um, you can see some of the damage here when the rocker broke, it took a nice nick in the housing here. This is a, let's see, this is a good one. This is the way it's supposed to look. And cylinder four has got a big gash in it right here from that rocker arm. So other than that, this looks to be in good shape. Um, I'll flip it over, show you the other side. Here's the other side of the head. So cylinders one, two, three, and four. We can see some of that previous damage again from those uh, glow plugs that broke off. This is the hole that the glow plug protrudes from. This is the hole where the fuel injector protrudes from. Um, it, obviously somebody was in here to fix this damage. They left the, the, the damage to the piston, they left the damage to the surface of the head, but they did evidently replace one or more of the valves at the time. Uh, cylinder three is good. Cylinder two is interesting. It, notice on cylinder three, you can see the pattern of the fuel injectors. There's clean marks. Uh, one, two, three, four, five uh, marks radially around where the injector is. That shows the spray pattern. You can see that also on cylinder four, but you don't see that on cylinder three. I'm wondering if cylinder three's fuel injector is not working properly. I did send them out for uh, inspection and cleaning. We'll see what they come back like. Uh, and again, cylinder one has that same kind of radial pattern around the injector. But um, again, let me find my... So this is the glow plug. It goes in through the side here and it protrudes there we go. Protrudes right up into the cylinders like this. So you can see when these were ceramic and it broke, that's what was bouncing around in these cylinders and that's what did this damage. Um, so, but other than that, this head's gonna go back. I'm putting new valves in it, new uh, springs, new valve stem seals, new, um, what else, uh, new retaining clips. So basically this head's gonna get rebuilt. And again, the guys on the forum say that this has got a nickel coating on it. You shouldn't mill it. Uh, and we're gonna use the thicker of the three available head gaskets, which is a two hole as they call it, which should give us a nice good bite. I'm also gonna upgrade I decided to do instead of bolts these use torque to yield bolts to hold the head to the cylinder and um, i'm doing the arp studs so you'll have studs here with nuts instead of the torque to yield bolts uh, so that that's a big upgrade that everybody says to do um, let's take a closer look at the this is pretty unique here so uh, let me flip this back over i want to show you another unique feature about this engine so this is the exhaust side Pretty simple exhaust manifold bolt here, dumps into the turbo. This is where the thermostat bolts to. Um, but up top here, these are the intake runners for one of the valves. And then these are the intake runners for the other valves. So each valve has its own unique tract. And then if you look at the intake manifold, which is also houses the cams, um, and, and they call it the valve cover, I guess technically that's true as well. Uh, they have runners that feed the center of the head and then runners under here that feed the side of the head. So each individual 
intake valve has its own runner, which is pretty neat. This is where your positive crankcase ventilation goes. Your cam sensor is here. I'm also replacing that. Boost pressure sensor here. I'm also replacing that. Oil fill. And then your injectors sit down here in these wells. This is another interesting point I learned on the forums. There's a little cookie, if you will, that sits down in that bright, shiny hole there. There's a little disc. It's a shim that... that uh, is removable. I have them out now because I was cleaning them, and this is going to the machine shop also for cleaning. Uh, and that's that's what shim stacks the injector for its spacing, and it's held down by a little crow's foot bracket that bolts to here. So um, a lot of guys lose these when they send them out to the machine shop because they don't realize that it's not part of the head. It's a separate piece. Let me flip this over and show you the other side of this. All right, so this is the underside of what would be the intake manifold and the valve cover. Also the cams are in here. I have the cams removed. Um, and again, here are your, the intake runner. So this is your main air intake. Notice the soot buildup from the EGR and the positive crankcase ventilation fumes. It builds up this nasty black residue. This is going out to a machine shop to have this all cleaned up. Um, but notice again your intake track. So intake, 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 that line up with the unique intakes on the cylinder head. Um, another unique feature about this engine, uh, the cams go in through here. You can't remove the caps and then there's an end cap that pops over here to seal this. And you can see a previous butcher or so-called mechanic, uh, I believe, I don't know if it's going to focus on this, but you can see the damage right here to this surface. And what that's from is somebody trying to knock this cap out and butchering this surface trying to get these caps out to get the cams out whatever so i mean i think i can clean that up and, and we got a new gasket obviously for this but um one of the unique features about this engine is these cams the cam gears there's no woodruff key or any way that these are are keyed to the to the cam this is just a press fit and these rotate uh with with no locking position. So the timing marks on here are really kind of irrelevant. Uh, what really is critical is that you get that hole right there is what lines up to the locking pin of the service tool. When you put this thing 90 degrees off top dead center, that hole lines up with the hole here on the exhaust side and then here on the intake side. So you have a pin that goes in here, a special tool that lines up with this mark which is the exhaust cam, and then this mark, uh, this mark, which is the intake cam. Uh, I did check the cam, it's in spec. There's no real wear on the lobes, which is good. Everything else looks relatively good. So this is gonna go out to the machine shop, and hopefully we got some good news. We'll catch up with you later.